box to box overlap and rugby world cup fantasy round seven is here this is how our team did in round six we got 445 points um obviously um again the forwards are just not the same as the backs like in fantasy rugby world cup fantasy the backs are where the points come from uh, but this time around, it didn't go too well for us. Our captain was Marcus Smith, who gave us a total of 18 points. Grand total of 18. Bandi Eki, 54 points from midfield. Ricky Ohane, 40, 41. And Luis Rizamid with 44. Then Adi Savia came through with 66 points in the back row. Most points in our team. I think this is the first time that we've had... Uh, this is the first time that we've had uh, a forward actually outscore everyone else in the team. Then, yeah, the likes of Kramer, Chesum, like just 16, 12, like 15, just nothing. Jack Morgan as well came to with 36 points, so that was nice. Um, yeah, and then our captain was obviously Marcus Smith, but with triple kicker um, Thomas Ramos, who gave us 39 points in their loss against South Africa. We only have the lineups for the All Blacks and Argentina games, so... Maybe some things will be changed here depending on who starts, but this is how we line up for round seven of the Rugby World Cup um, fantasy. Um, at prop, we have Stephen Kitchoff and Ellis Genge. At hooker, we have Cody Taylor. Again, as I said in my prediction for Argentina versus the All Blacks, I expect the All Blacks to just run through Argentina because that's one weakness that Wales really expose in this Los Pumas side. So... I'm looking for straight ball carriers. That is why you will see Richie Mwanga in the team and you have Cody Taylor in the team and Adi Savia. Um, in the locking department, Marie Toje and Franco Mostat. Mostat might not start, but if he does, I expect him to just be an amazing tackler. Last game he had, I think, 14 tackles in 44 minutes. Like, it was insane. Then, back row, Adi Savia, Ben Al, and Dion Furi. Dion Furi is here because... The last game, he came on as a sub. He came on as a prop. <laughs> Sorry, he came on as a flanker. But then there's also the possibility that he could actually play as a hooker. So he has like a dual threat. And being a hooker in a South African team means lineouts, right? You can easily score from lineouts. So that's why we have him there. I also realize with the forward, sometimes it doesn't really matter if you start with a bench player because if he comes on and scores like he'll, he'll give me more than anyone else in this team just because of how world cup is going right unless it's like someone like adi savia so um that's why we have him there then we have mitchell at nine and richie Mwanga at 10 um in our midfield we have jesse krill and manu tuilangi i just feel like i've selected two 13s in the lineup because these teams playing against each other, the only place I'm seeing where the space is going to be is around the 13 channel or around 13, 14 channel, right? So I'm not expecting the likes of um, um, Dialende and and Marchant to have much space in midfield. Like it's going to be a very tight game in midfield. So it's around the box, around the 13, 14 channel where I feel the space is going to be. And that's why we've also selected Cheslin Colby in our squad. And then, obviously, we have Mark Tillier, another man who is coming back into the squad and has something to prove. He scores tries whenever he plays. Like, he either scores two or doesn't score. So, that's why we have him in the squad. And that is our Round 7 Rugby World Cup Fantasy squad that is gearing up for the semifinals. <laughs>